religion, it's called Sikhism when it's the religion and it's Sikh when it's the person, even though it's spelled differently. But anyway, uh, this is also not required. It is a symbol that is used in the same way as the Catholic uses a crucifix or any other religious icon. It's supposed to make the person wearing it to think twice before doing evil acts with their hands. This is why it's worn on the right wrist. As I discovered online, it is not strictly necessary, as one of their websites put it, for the Sikh person to actually wear it. So again, the airline is lying. All I see happening here in the United Kingdom is the same thing that's happening here in the United States of America. What really makes me wonder is why no one has called the British out on this. We can easily find that they are lying in the article just by doing a little bit. I mean, anyone with Internet access can prove this. More and more of the Christian freedoms are purposely being torn away so as to ready them for the prophesied time of Jacob's trouble, wherein the Vatican agenda, which was first tested by them using Hitler, will be enacted against them when they finally whittle away all their freedoms. In, in their faith, of course, because you know, a lot of people actually, when they see their freedoms taken away, they lose their faith for some strange reason. And by the way, and quite off topic, I might add, Hitler used fluoride in his day to calm the masses so that when it was time to strike the Jews, they were too weak and complacent to stop them, literally. Today, we see fluoride in the water and all sorts of other toxins and poisons in process, you know, like MSG and stuff like that, in the processed foods that we eat. I'm not even going to touch on that they're no doubt doing stuff like this with the chemtrails, too. It has been proven time and time again that all these poisons are most assuredly messing with people's minds. Everything from couch potato complacency to short-term memory loss is the direct result of eating these processed foods. Now do you see why the Gideon Band is prophesied to be on an identic diet or a vegan diet before being called to stand in that number? The Lord is right now preparing his people today, just like he did with the Jews in those 40 years. They were used to those flesh pots of Egypt. He put them on the manna. He's doing that today, too. He's putting us back on our regular diet. And some of us are being prepared for translation as we speak. Amen? Another thing that occurred, that, that has occurred, actually, by all this hatred of Christians in the global media, is that it's generating fear in some of the Christians. So much so that they are hiding their faith in Christ now while it is still day, prophetically speaking. What will the end results of such actions be? It will make them, and worse yet, their own children, very weak and unable to stand firm in Christ when Christianity finally does become illegal and we literally have to hide in the mountains, caves, and the forests. I mean, did, you not, did Jesus say in John chapter 9, verse 4, that I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day? The night cometh when no man can work. The Lord allows the trials we have now so as to ready us for that day. I recall when I was very young, I was beat up by bullies because I was a goody two-shoes. I believe the Lord allowed those beatings and constant persecution of my classmates to continue for years so that my skin would be thick enough in the areas that needed to be thickened by the time I started hitting the pulpit. And he knew even back then he would call me to work the work I do today, which, by the way, is not very popular, as some of you may know. With that silly response of British Airways still in mind about it not being you know, required to cross, which it isn't, it's just a way for them to gild their, their little lily of deception. I'm moved to ask the airline my very own silly little question so as to better illustrate just how ridiculous their statement was. I ask, what about the nudist? Is this vulgar society not becoming a religious movement all on its own as it invades many churches the world over? Some even go so far as to preach. It's their doctrinal right to stand nude as did Adam and Eve. Do you recall this article I, uh, I put on my uh, People Get Ready book years ago? This is from uh, February 20, yeah, February 20th, 1996. I got this out of Danville Commercial Newspaper when I was living up uh, near that area. And this is from Ocean Isle Beach, North Carolina. And the, and the Associated Press put this up, too. It, says, and it's, it was titled, Bible Group Gets to the Naked Truth. And it says, living up to the Genesis verse, naked and not ashamed Christian nudists. Doesn't that sound oxymoronic? Yes, it does, but this is the article. It says that not ashamed Christian nudists are planning a weekend retreat of hot tubbing karaoke and reading Bibles in the buff. 
Jerry Love, a Methodist, and his wife, Carol, a Baptist, have already booked 60 reservations from around the country. And what they feel to realize, of course, is that Adam and Eve did not realize they were naked until they sinned. They were actually wearing robes of light until disobedience reigned supreme in their hearts, and they were found unworthy of that light. Sister White says in Patriarchs and Prophets on page 45 that the sinless pair wore no artificial garments. They were clothed with a covering of light and glory, such as the angels wear. So long as they lived in obedience to God, this robe of light continued to enshroud them. Truth is, had Moses been a bit closer to God in his day, I am convinced his entire body would have been bathed in the same light and not just his face, as Exodus chapter 35 speaks about. That facial glow was very frightening to the people, just as any mention of Christ is very fearful to the people today. In Exodus 34:30, it says, When Aaron and all the children of Israel saw Moses, behold, the skin of his face shone, and they were afraid to come nigh him. In a nutshell, you can't expect those into the flesh, as the nudists are, to see the light on this as we do. Still, as is obvious, many do declare that being nude is a spiritual experience for them. So, the truth is, in order to be a nudist, you are required to be naked. Are you not? So I ask, does this mean all nudists are now allowed to fly on British Airlines stark naked? If being required to wear an item allows you to, the right to do so on British Airways, then being required not to wear an item is just as legal. You see, I told you it was going to be a silly question. So. But that, that, that's how easy it is to expose their silliness. The fact of the matter is, the Lord is soon in coming, and all of the people on the planet are in his enemy's playground. Sadly, most of them are bowing to Satan as their god. In fact, we are literally surrounded. But then, this is where our Father shines the most. Need I remind you of David and Goliath? When it is proven a hopeless case in the eyes of man, the Lord steps in to be glorified before the eyes of man. Jesus said in Matthew 24, 37, But as the days of Noah were, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. So how bad was it in Noah's day, you ask? Genesis 6, 5 says, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart were evil, was only evil continually. Satan is sure to reflect this hate and fear of the Christian God through the people he controls in the very same way Christians reflect the love and peace of Jesus Christ, of the living God, because they walk so closely with him. Satan doesn't fear the Jew. He doesn't fear the Muslim or the Sikh or even the hardcore Satanist for that matter because it is very easily realized he has already been accepted as their true God. Except for the Satanist, he hides behind strange names to make himself appear less of a threat. And no marvel. For Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light, it says in 2 Corinthians 11:14. He has absolute control over them. Therefore, they are no threat to him or his agenda. After all, to fight against them would mean he must fight against himself. Jesus plainly said in Matthew 12, 26, If Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How shall then his kingdom stand? So let's look at the facts here for a moment. Satan knows what's happened on Calvary 2,000 years ago, and he knows it, it ended his reign supreme on earth when Jesus arose that Sunday morning. The enemy of souls knows all too well that mankind now has access to a power that literally makes him flee when used properly. This is why those he had control over 2,000 years ago allowed the demons in them to shout in knee-knocking fear towards Jesus, what have we to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of God? Art thou come hither to torment us before the time? And that's recorded in Matthew 8, 29. It is obvious by their words, they were literally scared to death that Jesus was going to end their lives right there and then. Satan's fear is very real here. He cannot hide it any longer. It's recorded in the Word of God in many areas. It's recorded in historic record for 6,000 years. It's recorded in the statements of the people, like the British Airlines, for example. And it's recorded in the eyes of each and every soul that walks with him in this day. Seriously, why else would the powers of the world pass laws to try and restrict Christian sermons with that 501c3 malarkey and, 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 and make our Bibles out to be illegal uh, hate speech, like they did in Canada and here in Philadelphia? And, and then they actually torture and kill Christians in Eastern nations. Why else would Satan have men in Oxford University in 2005 actually test methods?